I rise in support of House Bill 3. Um, I believe this bill is about parental consent for minors, reporting statistics, getting data to improve and, and inform our policies, and requiring in-person chemical abortions, all about the safety of women. And I'd like to point out on pages 25, 27, and 53, it's been stated on here in, in, uh, in the conversation that the, the patient, the woman's name has to be reported. It says the report shall not contain the name of the pregnant patient. The Office of the Inspector General shall ensure that none of the information included could reasonably lead to the identification of a pregnant woman upon whom an abortion was performed. And uh, on page uh, 53, if I can find it real quick, it says reports required under this section shall not contain the name of the patient. So that's been some misinformation that's been stated on the floor. <clears throat> I'd like to commend the lady from Mead for all the work that she's put into it along with all the others. Um, the parental consent portion was my portion of the bill that I had, a single bill. It was brought to me by a young lady who had been forced to have an abortion as a teenager after being raped at a party in, in high school while she was intoxicated. Her parents drove her over state lines to get the abortion, and she said it tore her family apart. Left to make her true choice, she would have chosen life. She first wanted me to make it illegal for parents in Kentucky to take minors across the, the border, but because parental rights are very important in Kentucky, uh, we, she decided to bring this issue to me uh, instead. She wanted to make a difference for minor women in Kentucky due to her own experience. As a former director of youth ministry for nearly 20 years for the Diocese of Owensboro, I attended sessions about legal issues at national conferences. When discussing permission slips required for youth events such as retreats, outings, camps, etc., we were told they were not worth the paper they were written on as far as avoiding lawsuits, but if you had done your due diligence, it would minimize the economic impact of a lawsuit if one were to occur. A key element of those permission slips was parental consent and signature. On numerous occasions when gathering youth prior to leaving for a specific outing, kids would forget to have their permission slips signed, and I witnessed on more than one occasion young people signing each other's forms as though they were the parent. If I witnessed it, I would call the parents and get a verbal okay and note that on the form if the parent wasn't able to physically come to the church to sign. Coming from the healthcare world, informed consent is a key issue for any other medical procedure, and I'm not sure why anyone would want it to be any less for abortions, particularly when happening to a minor. I would think the abortionists would want that extra legal protection to know for a fact that at least one of the parents or legal guardians had given consent and that is actually one of the parents or legal guardians and not someone uh, pretending to be. The lady from Jefferson 43 spoke in committee yesterday about abusive parents, which I'm aware they exist. House Bill 3 does not require notification of a parent who has been enjoined by domestic violence order or interpersonal protective order or has been convicted of or entered into a criminal offense against a minor. For emancipated minors, which is a part of judicial bypass, federal law we can't get around, I pray that judges actually consider the facts as to what ultimately is best for the young women and don't just grant permission just because they can. If so, I say God help them come judgment day. But there is a provision that the petition for abortion can be granted if there is a preponderance of evidence that the minor is a victim of child or sexual abuse inflicted by one or both of her parents or legal guardians. Getting an abortion is a life-altering decision. There are other options, including adoption as we have three out of 10 grandchildren now through adoption, and those three are very special to our entire family. I also fully support other aspects of House Bill 3, but I will speak only of three of them. The proper reporting of abortions, regardless of whether they're surgical or chemical, again, why would you not want to know what's going on to prevent bad outcomes for women, particularly the RH negative factor? I'm RH negative. I never had to have a shot because all of our girls were negative, but if I hadn't been tested, I wouldn't have known. All women deserve to know this for future pregnancies and their health. The regulation of chemical abortions in Kentucky, again, for the safety of women, especially the possibility of reversal for, of a chemical abortion. We heard in committee from an OBGYN from Murray prior to the pandemic that he had not one but two young women come to him within a matter of weeks or months at, of each other regretting having taken the abortion pills. He contacted physicians in California who had successfully reversed abortions. He applied their protocols and both ended in perfectly healthy live births and babies. So why not let young women know what the reversal, that reversal is a possibility? That is true informed consent. And the final aspect of House Bill 3 I will talk about is the proper disposal of fetal remains. We lost a grandson in 2020 at approximately 20 to 22 weeks due to a fetal anomaly. He had died in the womb. 
Our daughter's choices were to have a C-section, which had its dangers because she wasn't far enough along to fully thin her uterus, or go to Louisville and have a D&E, &E, a dilatation and evacuation. They dilate the cervix and evacuate the uterus. It hit me that if she went to Louisville, probably an abortionist would have been doing the procedure, which is a dismemberment procedure, where the arms and legs are ripped off in order to get them out because they're physically too big to get out otherwise. Our son-in-law told her there was nothing more they could do for this baby, and he was worried about her. They had four other children. She said it would haunt her if she had a D&E, even though the baby was dead. So we prayed, and she said what she wanted was a C-section. And everything came out good, and we had a graveside service and buried our little Leo in their backyard, following all the 811 laws and statutes. Our son-in-law dug the grave himself. It was the proper disposal of her fetal remains of a wanted baby. Don't unwanted babies deserve the same? What is the difference? And as far as being between a mis miscarriage and an abortion, I have had a constituent contact me when I first came into office that had a miscarriage, and they had to pay for the, for the um, uh, disposal of their baby. And they wondered, they asked me, why don't women that have abortions have to do the same? Why don't I have that same financial responsibility? And I believe this bill would help solve that problem. So again, I urge you to support House Bill 3 by voting yes, and thank you, Mr. Speaker.